Right, we're outside the hangar now, and we've got another interesting little plane here. It is, uh, it's a Auster Autocrat, and it's got, I've just spoken to my friend here about this, but I love this little design feature, and he's gonna explain what it's about. And uh, yeah, this is, yeah, this is pretty awesome actually. So yeah, let's get into the plane. So, sorry, carry on. Mark. So, uh, Auster was um, a British company set up in 1946, which was basically uh, a development of the original company which was designed well, which had a license to build American Tailorcraft designs and then the uh, beginning of World War II uh, the new fangled thing was air observation po uh, post aircraft basically re small reconnaissance aircraft uh, going up and down the lines looking for artillery and you know yep. uh, for targets for artillery and then you had the Auster Mark One, which was basically a tailor craft, and then they started evolving from that. Yep. So the three uh, came out in 1942, and most of those served in um, Burma and uh, Africa. The Mark IV and the V were later developments of that, but they had Lycoming American engines up the front, and most of those saw service in Normandy and Italy. And then after the war, when they thought that everybody would learn to fly or fly, carrying on from when they did when they were in the forces, Auster came up with the Autocrat. So this is a 1946 aeroplane and was probably the most common Auster of the, of the type. You see them at all different events now, they're very collectible, but they're all variations of the theme. So the Autocrat came first and then they changed the wings, they changed the tail, they changed the engine and it became something else. But when you look at an Auster, you can tell what it is because it's the same, same design body. feature. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. You know. Now, the, this, is, this is my favourite bit and here, which is a, another little mini propeller on the wing, and that is basically a, is it a dynamo. Dynamo, dynamo. So the same way when you had your old bicycle where you had the, the, the rubbed up against the tyre for your lights, it's the same thing. So, uh, you know, at 10 knots that starts spinning when the aeroplane's flying along at 60, 70 miles an hour. A bit more if you're lucky in an Auster. You know, that spins enough basically to run your, your, the battery for your radio, but now everything is smaller icons, you don't really need it, so it's still going to turn. So that that is still moving, that yeah, will that still will work, still, well, it's just yeah, not yeah, charging yeah, yeah, yeah. anymore, that's yeah. all. Yeah, yeah, so you've got two seats in the front and then a child seat in the back. Oh, it's actually got a child seat. Yeah, it's going to be knocking myself out. Yeah. There you go. Oh wow, yeah. <laughs> and that literally is a child seat yeah. because there's no leg room. <laughs> so basically this was a Mark V or so with a Lycoming, civilianised, with a Blackburn bomb, uh, Blackburn Cirrus Minor up front, of about 90 horsepower, and then became the Autocrat. And then from that you had the Alpine, you had the 8 lit trainer, which was aerobatic with smaller wings and a bigger engine. Yeah. You had the Autocar, which was a four-seater. God, oil! <laughs> yeah. Look at the oil! <laughs> So, if there's no if there's no oil, then you know there's something wrong, you know. Yeah, because there's no oil, oil in the engine. And also <laughs> with oil is like you know. Yeah, so obviously we've got a, a metal propeller now. Yeah. Rather I'll than have wooden. Some have metal. All but... oh, right. So it, is it down to age or just that as they've got been repaired, they've gone to metal rather than wooden? Yeah. But... It's, it's difficult, it's whatever's modified for that aeroplane. So originally it, it would have had a wooden propeller and then over time, other things were available, yeah. and, you know, approved to have been. You know, so is that airspeed? Uh, so, what's? Yeah, so that, that's, that's the same sort of thing as uh, having uh, the, the pitot on the wing. So that feeds into the cockpit. Oh, right. So it's, a, it's like a Venturi tube. Yeah, Ven yeah, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it zips. <laughs> oh, it so. makes it easier. Rather than having inspection panels where you take off, you just open the zip and appear inside, you know. Yeah. These have been put on a later date, but these are more of American. Yeah. American aircraft. Because obviously these these are hollow winged, but I've um, seen planes where yeah. they have tanks in it and you push a cup up to make sure there's no water in the, the fuel yeah. before you go out, first inspection. See the fuel gauge for this one is just a, a, a turn turning wheel at the front, so in there, in the middle. You know, oh, that there? You used to normally think that's the compass. Oh, right. right. Compass so it's not, yeah, it's, it's not a compass, it's a fuel no, no. gauge. So it's just, you know. <laughs> I don't really want that in my head. No. Right, well, a very, uh, uh, see, I find things like that amazing. That's such a, it's a, 
a very good idea of keeping power yeah um, as long it's as it's working and it works yeah you know? yeah it's drag yeah it but is like drag it's really only the horses you see on so yeah, uh, another really interesting, lovely little plane. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the walk around.